Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and uh, this time it's a time-lapse battle report between Makai and the Highborn Elves. Um, we got some people together to play a day full um, of 9th Age games. Uh, so each of us played against uh, the other people. Um, we were four people in total and we had some um, kind of fluffy lists. We had the, the unwritten or maybe written <laughs> agreement um, of not duplicating any choices in your army and just keeping it also kind of friendly, so not optimizing your list um, to the extreme. Uh, one of the players came up with Makar to play with um, and he had this list. So this Makar Guya, that is uh, basically your barbarian chief, lord level character. Um, with the hot on curse, this is, I believe, a beastman, beast hurts uh, item that you can also use as a shooting weapon, but also as a lance in combat. Then he has a Taltos, which is apparently a wizard master. <laughs> he is on the dark chariot. Then we have the Makar Lancers. This is one of the unique um, units in the book. So they have the Lamellar Barring, which gives them some extra armor safe but reduces their movement I believe and they have the Makar Lance which is a two-handed lance um, so in combat I believe it gives you plus two strength and battle focus or something um, but you cannot use it together with the shield so at range they have a two of armor safe in close combat they have a three of armor safe then you have the Tamir Vassals, these are basically the barbarians in the book, um, he had them with spear and shield. He had some horse archers, so the horse archers have a rule called parting shot where they can uh, flee from a charge declared against them, but they still uh, are allowed to do the standard shoot, and they normally hit on a 2+, plus. so that is, that is quite impressive, because basically that's just 8 hits <laughs> that you get, this it's still strength 3, so... Against some units, it's, it's kind of influential. Against others, it isn't that influential. Uh, nomadic Giant with a Tribal War Spear. Um, the Tribal War Spear we know from the Warriors of the Dark Gods book. Then he had a Karkadon Hurt. Um, so these are the mounts from the Warriors of the Dark Gods. Um, these can do impact hits also in the second rank. Um, but then when they're charging, they're really, really frightening. And if they don't then they are not that frightening. <laughs> and then to round it out, he had a Step Mammoth, um, which could be the BSB in the army with Rally Around the Flag. So that's for the Makar. I think it's a nice, just well-balanced army. Uh, kind of fluffy, not too extreme. And then we go to the Highborn Elves. Uh, so the Highborn Elves, uh, he had a Mage, a Commander, some Spears, etc, etc. So I'll just go through it a little bit more detail. The mage, he's on cosmology, with master, you have four spells, and you have quite a decent array of spells at that, because cosmology offers you the option of uh, either, um, for example, perception of strength casting on your own unit or on your enemy's unit, so it does allow um, to play both into MSU and uh, Death Star builds. Then you have a commander on a reaver chariot with a shield with Duskforge. Duskforge is <laughs> just really good at, at low uh, point values because there's not a lot of AP10 options in uh, books in general. And then we have the Citizen Spears, as I said before, 30 of them. Uh, some Elan Reavers, you just need some chaff. And Ibon Elves is still one of the armies that uh, can field some decent chaff and core. Then 10 sets and archers, uh, 20 flame wardens, wardens with a standard bear. These guys are really, really good if they manage to pass their Aegis saves and otherwise they struggle a bit more. Then the Knights of Rima, the true glass cannons that are, however, protected from alchemy magic. Swordmasters that are really good at low point values. And then a Reaver Chariot and a Sky Sloop to round it out. So this was a game that I wasn't actually uh, myself involved in. Um, so it's just two other people playing, basically. You can see my game going on the right. Uh, I was playing with my Dread Elves against uh, Beast Hurts. Uh, so in the upcoming weeks, you'll also see some other battle reports, either Beast Hurts against Makar or the Highborn Elves or um, the Dread Elves facing some other stuff. Uh, we had one webcam um, for the two tables in total. So... Yeah, this was just right after the deployment of the both armies. Um, so you can see in the bottom, you the horse archers on the left. They vanguarded up. Then you have the Makar lances, the 
chariot with the master, then you have the barbarians with the uh, with the war spear giant, Karkadon Earth, and the step mama. And then I think that the Makara are starting in this uh, in this battle. Um, so the enemy has already vanguarded his Helen Reavers on the left also, and I would assume that the best targets for the um, the horse archers right now would be these Reavers because if you can make them panic off the board. Uh, then, well, you basically have uh, the opponent lose a unit already. And the archers, I think um, the player is going for the uh, archers for the shooting of the uh, horse archers, but I would rather have uh, used the horse archers to uh, to put some damage on the reavers because the archers themselves, they don't do that much damage, especially to your uh, Makar lancers. And uh, General, by the way, is in the unit of uh, Makar lancers, I believe. Um, so further the deployment of uh, the Highborn Elf player. So he has the uh, Reavers on the left to find the, the um, Archers and then the Sky Sloop. I guess that's the uh, Flame Wardens then. And then you have the, um, the, Tyrannic, the Reaver Chariot that he has in the list. Behind that it's the um, Commander on the Chariot. Then he has the Spear Block with the Mage. Then he has the Swordmasters. And finally, the um, Knights of Rima. So the Knights of Rima on the flank is always a really good choice because they just threaten really far. Having a chariot in the middle of your lines is also really good uh, because of the threat range again. Um, and usually in the middle of the line, there's a lot of chaff being played. So anyway, having a chariot to just clear out some small units, um, it's really great. And we didn't have that much shooting in all of our lists combined even, um, so just having a, a 3 wound Resilience 4 chariot that can zone nearly the entire battle line is, is really good points, at, uh, or really good value at these uh, point levels. Um, I'm a bit surprised that he didn't put the Sky Sloop behind one of his units, because the Sky Sloop uh, can just still charge over, um, and it also allows you for a charge that um, if you fail it, then you're going to bump into your own unit, so you don't really run the risk of uh, of putting your chariot out there to be charged. I've never really played with sky slips myself, but I could imagine that that would be a re really good play for them. Just keep them behind your back lines, uh, be behind your front line, sorry. Um, use them to charge away stuff that you uh, want to get rid of, uh, that your opponent cannot um, use to, to hold. And then it's, it's going to be relatively safe because um, it's going to still be in the backfield, um, and then, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a nice place, I think. Um, yeah, so then it's the Highborn Elf turn one. The Sky Slip declares a charge against the Horse Archers. They have to flee through the Elan Reavers. Uh, so probably the, the deployment there could have been a little bit, or the move could have been a little bit uh, better to not give them. Uh, um, the dangerous trains from going through the line reavers. Uh, then the highborn elf player declares charges against the uh, Makara lances. I would estimate that these are quite long charges. Um, however, the uh, uh, the flame wardens they can also make the charge, so it's going to be 17 inches at most. That would mean that for the chariot it's quite close actually. However, you would also want to just threaten uh, uh, the lancers quite a bit. I think it's uh, quite a wise play of the opponent to also um, include the uh, Elan Reavers in the charge. Um, because if you count out the combat res, what now is happening is that, well, there's a couple of scenarios that could happen. Um, one of the scenarios is the scenario that actually happened where he got the chariot in and the Elan Reavers. The Reavers were quite likely probably to make the charge uh, together with the chariot. So in that scenario you have a chariot that does impact hits. Your opponent is likely not going to remove all of the Reavers, so you have the wounds from the impact hits, which is going to be three wounds or so. You have the Elan Reavers that will do a wound or two. The crew of the chariot maybe do a, does a wound. So you are whittling down the units the enemy unit anyway. And also in this way you are pretty likely to hold for at least one turn. Um, so your opponent could still smack down the chariot. He's probably not going to smack down both the chariot and the reavers. And then again the knights they are going to be steadfast but in this way 
Um, the charge of the Flame Wardens wasn't as risky as it would have been if he hadn't charged the Reavers also in there. Um, because had he only charged in the Chariot, then um, the Chariot could have broken, and then um, there could have been a counter charge from the Lancers into the Flame Wardens. I must say I'm, I'm not too enthusiastic about, probably at least, about charging the Lancers into the Flame Wardens. However, there's no character of any kind in the Flame Wardens, and uh, Makara could still buff the unit up with some uh, magic. But Flame Wardens, they strike really hard. Uh, at agility 6, so they probably strike before the Lancers. So that would mean that you get 15 attacks um, that hit you on 2+, plus, that wound you on 3+. Plus. Yeah, it's going to be like 8 wounds or so, you're going to face AP1. Yeah, but you only have a 4 up then left in combat, so that's going to take 5 wounds to your, to your Magar Lancer unit. Um, so that would be suboptimal, even if after you get a chariot uh, charge in there, because then you're only left with 5 Lancers, so you're not going to make it in that case. Um, a good way to counteract that would be to also charge in the, the Dark Chariot, the Wizard Master on the Dark Chariot in there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if uh, Flame Wardens are just a really fickle unit in the sense that either it goes really well or it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, deployment wise, I don't really know um, how they deployed or, or if someone dropped for first or anything like that. Um, but I would say that the Karkadon herd is not in the best position because basically you wanted to charge anything. Um, and then the tool in the opponent's army to counter that is going to be the Knights of Rima. Um, so if the Makara player had been um, able to bear out the Karkadon herd against anything other than um, the Knights of Rima, that would have been better, I, in my opinion at least. Yeah, so then we work out the combat uh, between the Makara Lancers and the Chariot. So this is going to be uh, the result, I would assume. Oh wow, <laughs> I'm quite surprised by this. Um, so I had assumed that uh, my car lancers would be steadfast and they would make the break test, um, especially if you have the possibility of getting rally around the flag with your uh, step mama. However, in this case, apparently the Makara lancers break <laughs> from the Eline Reavers, probably due to the wounds uh, done by the uh, the chariot, actually. So that is quite a big point swing, because that's the general of the Macaragon, a big unit of Macaragon. So that's about 800 points, I think. <laughs> and the Eline Reavers and the Chariot combined are like 300 points, so that is definitely a good point swing uh, for the Hymon Elves. And also, well, he, he gets an overrun into uh, the Wizard on the Chariot. I don't think the Wizard on the Chariot has a very good offensive profile, likely he has either one or two attacks, and the Steeds also have two attacks. He is going to be Resilience 5, so it might still be okay. However, this is quite a big chunk of... Uh, of... Uh, um, of the list of the Makara that's just gone from the from the start of the game. Previous round, uh, the Makara player did summon up a uh, Totemic Summon, I believe. So this... Um, yeah, this is always nice. Um, any, any raising spell, anyway, um, at a lower points value, uh, becomes way better. Uh, because also, if you look at vampire counts, if you can summon 2d6 plus 4 zombies, uh, for example, at 4,500 points, that's quite different from doing it at 3,000 points. Um, and then zombies are still one example, but a totemic summon at 4.5k, Probably your opponent has some tools to deal with it, or at least he can commit some of his army to it, and it doesn't matter too much. At 3000k, it's just a monster even with Resilience 5. <laughs> that is, in its own, already quite scary. So, here the Makar player decided to uh, move the Totemic Summon towards the Spear Block. Um, I believe the Totemic Summons are not um, stubborn or fearless or um, supernal or anything, so they just have to take break tests, and if they fail, they flee. Um, so, uh, yeah, boxing up against three ranks um, and a banner 
from the spears is quite tough. You are going to get a rear charge and you're going to get uh, the charge, so that's uh, three combat res. You will probably win that combat, uh, so you could go for the scenario where you win the combat and you might break the unit at Discipline 9. It is possible, it's it's not out of uh, out of the realm of possibilities. However, with the setup that there was, I think I would have preferred personally to go for the uh, um, the, river, the the commander on the chariot, uh, because if you manage to strike him down a little bit, um, it's it's going to be easier to break him anyway. Um, and also combat-wise, the guy has a potion of strength. However, potion of strength does not benefit from lightning reflexes, so it's only on a three plus that your totemic summon is surely going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and otherwise, um, yeah, you have quite a big chance that the commander is actually going to go break because you have a charge in the rear against uh, BSB, so that's a uh, discipline seven with a reroll. That's I, I would have gone for that one um, just because even if you manage to put in a wound or so, I think I would have preferred that personally. Otherwise, the Makar, they yeah, they they. Put themselves a little bit in a in a weird spot, I think, with the uh, um, barbarians, with the giant just moving forward and preparing for the hit. I don't know if the Knights of Rhyme can actually see them at this point. I think they can just not, maybe. Um, and the Karkadon Hurt is having a little bit of an issue with the uh, Rhyme Knights um, ready to charge in. However, the Knights are going to have to go through some woods. Um, dangerous strength tests for very elite cavalry is always really, really interesting. <laughs> um, but they can also just go down, move down uh, southward, wait, make the wheel a bit lower on the table, and then uh, hit the Karkin on the hurt in that way. So that probably they only have to take one dangerous strength test. So then the Highborn Elf turn. Um, so there's charges everywhere. Uh, I think he's just going to go in um, on the Barbarians with everything that he has. And I think also, actually, the Totemic Summon might have made it into combat last turn. But then again, the, the Spear stays stuck. Um, now, if this combat would have gone the right way for the Makar, it would certainly have swung the battle again uh, to the other side. I would, however, not have pushed up the Barbarians as far as as uh, as it has been done in this battle. So the opponent now is able to very easily make his uh, his chariot charge with the commander in the barbarians and also the uh, charge with the uh, flame wardens. The charge of the chariot is quite interesting. Um, it's a bit of a toss up um, because the chariot is going to contribute some wounds. However, the Tribal Warspear Giant is also quite happy to strike at the Chariot uh, because the Flame Wardens anyway have a 4-up Aegis. The Chariot with the Tribal Warspear you gain also 1 AP, I believe. So you go to AP3 and I believe the Chariot Prince or the Chariot Commander has a 2-up armor save. So it goes to a 5-up rerollable. The Flame Wardens are at a... Uh, for Vegas, so that is comparable, um, but the Tribal Wasp here has multiple wounds too against large, or maybe only against Towering Presence and Gigantic, I think that's the one. Um, so in that case it's it's not too much of a gamble even. Um, but yeah, we'll see what, what's going to happen here. I would expect that a lot of the barbarians are going to die, um, and then maybe the Tribal Wasp here giant is going to make up for it with just good attacks and an impressive thunderstorm. <laughs> However, it's also a bit of um, luck still with the uh, Flame Wardens, whether they are able to uh, just fully munch up the unit or not, and they can save later. Yeah, so I think deployment-wise, the Karkadon Herd should definitely not have been uh, up against the uh, Knights of Rhyma. Because this is basically just a terrible situation for the herd. 
um, where you're getting charged by something that's going to hit you with uh, the six knights. So it's 12 attacks that hit on two plus, wound on two plus. It's going to be like eight wounds. Uh, eight wounds doesn't sound too much even because you only lose two Karkadans. However, the Karkadans, they, yeah, they don't have a lot of, of damage output um, if they're not charging. I believe they only have two attacks each. That's possibly strength five. Um, so that would be like four hits, three wounds. Maybe you'll also kill two Knights of Rhyma. If you do, you're still steadfast. And you might grind, probably you'll grind the unit down then. But um, that would be preferred scenarios for the Kakadon head. Anyway, the Barbarians, they uh, do kill quite some uh, Flame Wardens. However, apparently the Aegis save of the Flame Wardens has just been too critical there. Um, and the Barbarians get run down, just like the Makar Lances got run down earlier. So this player is also a little bit unlucky with the uh, flea rolls. Um, yeah, we have a nice cascade of the chariot also uh, into the Karkadon herd. I hadn't seen that before yet, uh, but that is also quite tr uh, yeah destructive for the Makar player. <laughs> yeah, this is this is basically an example of, of how Hibern Elves can be quite potent. <laughs> I think partly it's also because um, the Makar player did give the nice opportunities for the uh, Hibern Elf player to just charge and uh, go over his, um, his uh, barbarians mostly. Like the Makar, they, the, the Lancers, they were still at quite a distance and Having to, to count um, just the Reavers and the Chariot as a threat, it is interesting because it is quite fragile, but it also deals still some damage. And a lot of rank of file, if you're not playing Elves, is not that good at just attacking something to the sides of the unit. So I think it was a really good play of the Hibernal player to charge in the Reavers. Uh, but then again, it also comes down to... Um, the first turn, the vanguard of the game actually, where the horse archers were vanguarded and they didn't target the reavers, but instead they targeted, uh, they targeted the archers. So at the end of the game, the archers are still on the table, I think. Yeah, they are on the left side uh, next to the sky sloop. The few kills on these archers, they weren't that consequential, um, whilst if the opponent had really focused on the Reavers, then probably the first turn play of the Highborn Elf player would have uh, looked quite different. I don't even think he would have gone for the double charge with the Flame Wardens and the Chariot, because it was probably, looking at the distances, quite likely that the uh, Flame Wardens wouldn't have made it. And if you only have the Chariot, the Chariot is probably going to die. Um, it might flee away also, and then you get a pursuit, and then basically you get the Makar Lancers anywhere in the army. Um, and then you could go through the archers, you could overrun, um, and go into the back lines of the Highborn Elves army, which is not really what they like. Uh, so, for me, I think this game was actually... Uh, well, there, there was some, some movement also still in the second turn, mostly. Um, that also um, impacted the game, of course, with the Karkanon herd coming uh, quite close to the, the Knights of Rhyma, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, to me, the first vanguard of the game, that yeah, that was basically the most influential move in the game, I think. Yeah, so that's going to be all. Um, well, that was a 20-0 for the uh, Highborn Elves. Uh, I hope you also like it when I comment on other people's uh, footage. Um, or oh, well, <laughs> it's my own footage, but then of another battle. Um, there's going to be two more of this. Um, so, yeah, I hope I see you in the future again.